Welcome everybody. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at the graphic novel Star Wars Crimson Empire. Now this uh, story focuses on the uh, Imperial Royal Guard and there's uh, two uh, members of that uh, Royal Guard that, that are the focus of the story. On the cover is one of the, the main character which is uh, Kier Kanos and uh, uh, the other uh, uh, you can call villain of the story is uh, Karnar Jax. Uh, Kier Kanos, as, as a, as a uh, character, uh, he's uh, portrayed as being very uh, loyal to Emperor Palpatine and kind of a, you know, uh, a law and order type of guy. I mean, he, he is a part of the Empire, but he uh, kind of uh, is, is supportive of, of Emperor Palpatine and the existing uh, power structure. Now, on the other end of the spectrum is uh, Karner Jax, also an Imperial Guard, who has, you know, has uh, visions of, of, of power. He wants to be the, the head honcho, not just of uh, the Imperial Guards, but also just of the, you know, to rule the, to rule the Empire. So, uh, the, there's a, the story focuses on the struggle between those two characters um, and uh, their eventual uh, meeting at the end, uh, their, their eventual battle at the end. I mean, that's, that's not really giving much away because you know there's going to be a, a showdown at the end. So that's kind of a, a given with a Star Wars novel like this. Um, so there, basically what happens is this uh, story takes place um, during a time when the, uh, the Emperor Palpatine and all his clones were destroyed. And so there's this power vacuum within the Empire. And that will uh, come into play as, we, uh, as the story progresses. Now the story starts out on this planet called uh, Feta. Feta is kind of a, a backwater planet, uh, and uh, what happens is Kyrkanos is going is shows up on this planet, uh, Feta. He's kind of an outcast, so we don't learn why until about um, a little before halfway through the story. So he basically um, shows up in this uh, cafe on Feta, and he uh, overhears some Imperials. There's a local Imperial garrison on this planet. And he overhears the story about uh, how, um, you know, just the, 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 the power of struggle within the Empire. And he's kind of listening as, as these Imperial um, uh, officers are talking about this. Well, one of the Imperial officers says, hey, what are you doing? Why are you listening to us? This is none of your business. You know, you need to, you need to, you need to stop listening or whatever, you know. So ends up basically starts picking a fight with Kyrkanos. Well, Kyrkanos being the, the trained royal guard that he is, he basically, you know, lays out the Imperial officers and the stormtroopers that come to try to uh, try to rescue uh, and capture Kyrkanos. But uh, what happens that after that is that the local, there's a, a rebel alliance uh, group on this planet as well. They have a secret base there. They overhear about this guy named Kyrkanos, you know, basically laying out the Imperial uh, officers and, and stormtroopers, and they, they, they basically, uh, one of their uh, contacts gets in contact with Kyrkanos, says, hey, you know, come back to our uh, rebel base, and, you know, we want to talk to you, um, obviously because he's, um, and appears to be in such opposition to the, uh, to the uh, Imperial presence there on the planet. So, as the story progresses, we find out that there's a uh, traitor, a double, double cross uh, agent within the ranks of the rebellion, who's who's leaking um, information to the local imperial garrison as to where this rebel base is. Um, and what happens is the local uh, imperial uh, troops show up and attack the uh, the rebel rebel base on the uh, planet Feta. Now, some along these lines also is the, this local commander of the Imperial troops on this planet. He's contacted by um, Karnar Jax, the villain in the story, and basically Karnar Jax tells him, well, "I'm looking for Kyrkanos. You know, don't do anything until I get down there on the planet. I'll take care of it." Well, this local Imperial commander wants to make a name for himself, so he ends up attacking the rebel base on Feta, and we can see here's the beginning of the battle. Now, they're pretty much outnumbered as far as, uh, you know, uh, the Rebel Alliance is. And they're doing, you know, 
kind of poorly, but then this mysterious figure in red shows up and starts kicking stormtroopers all left and right. And uh, you can see some pretty cool uh, battle sequences here. Now at the time, they don't know that uh, this mysterious man in red is actually Kyrkanos, the uh, uh, member of the Imperial Guard, or at least the former Imperial Guard, now that uh, Emperor Palpatine is uh, no longer in power, or alive. Um, and here we see a demonstration of Kyrkanos' fighting abilities. Um, he, basically, this panel shows a, from the perspective of an Imperial TIE fighter, about to blow uh, Kyrkanos, uh, Merith Sin, the leader of the uh, local uh, Rebel Alliance, and her uh, right-hand man, I think his name is Sadiq or something like that. It's a forgettable name. Anyhow, they're about to be blasted by this TIE fighter. Well, uh, he, uh, Kyrkanos takes aim, and then he just basically shoots the guy. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, it's kind of quite impressive, I guess, for his, his fighting skills, that he's able to do that, take on a a uh, TIE fighter with a single blaster. Um, I find it interesting too that the uh, Imperial Guards use uh, blasters as well as hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons. I thought that was kind of interesting and uh, provided some insight as to what the uh, Imperial Guard was all about. Uh, so end up ends up basically with with the help of Kyrkanos, they uh, the Rebel Alliance ends up routing the Imperial troops uh, this local on this on this planet. Well, what subsequently happens is um, Merith Sin acts about his back, Kyrkanos' background. Turns out that uh, Kyrkanos and Karner Jax were both, of course, members of the Imperial Guard. They were trained together, and as, um, as the uh, Kyrkanos explains, there is a betrayal that takes place, and we'll go to that panel right now where the Imperial Guard basically uh, is um, ambushed by the Imperial Stormtroopers. Uh, but we, we learn that it's actually Karner Jax that issued the order uh, not only to do away with Emperor Palpatine and his clones, but also to do, do away with anybody that's loyal to um, Emperor Palpatine, which is why Karner Jax is so in opposition to Kyrkanos. So we get some pretty cool shots of uh, these Imperial Guards, um, Imperial Royal Guards being under siege by the uh, uh, Stormtroopers. So, uh, as you would expect, there is a showdown. And here's the planet. The planet they actually end up sh uh, fighting on is a, the planet that they trained on when they were going through their training to become Imperial Guards. So we see the uh, Connor Jacks landing on the planet with his elite troops uh, about to hunt down uh, Kyrkanos. As you can see, there's a nice shot here of um, one of the uh, Imperial Guards thinking he's got his sights ready to blast away at, <coughs> excuse me, at Kyrkanos, but he's looming in the background about to take him out, so. Pretty cool action in this, in this uh, graphic novel and uh, pretty well um, drawn as well. So to sum up, the last thing I want to show you, or next to last, is uh, <clears throat> there's this battle scene. They end up uh, facing off against each other, and it's quite a drawn out battle. <clears throat> now, finally, they have some nice cover art from the um, six issues. There is Connor Jax and Kirikinos <clears throat> when they were training before they ever got their Imperial robes. This is a cool picture. You can see it's uh, Kirikinos fighting off a group of stormtroopers. A uh, picture of the Rebel Alliance leader. <coughs> Excuse me. Picture of Connor Jax and his elite guard here, which are, appear to be stormtroopers in black colored uh, armor. And the final showdown between uh, Connor Jax and Kyrkanos. Okay, final thoughts. Um, 
it's this book is is much like a, ho a Hollywood blockbuster movie. Everybody, most of the time, you're going to know what the ending is. You know what the plot is. It's going to be. But what makes the movie worth going to see uh, is the well, number one special effects, and number two is the uh, the action. Well, this graphic novel has action, and it does have pretty well drawn, illustrated uh, uh, graphics. Or, or panels. So I would say, yeah, pick it up if you if you like what you see. If you like, uh, want to learn more about the uh, Imperial Guard. That's the nice thing about this is they go behind the scenes of the Imperial Guard. In the movies, you never really s see them except they're in the background, you know, in the, in, the, in the trilogies. But here, you get to see more in depth as to what they're all about and that sort of thing. Okay, well, stay tuned because I'm going to do a review of these two action figures in the comic pack. Stay tuned.